Brexit. Where, where, what's the atmosphere at the moment like in the House of Commons, Robert? It's really tough. Uh, it's a very difficult decision. It's one of the biggest decisions I'll ever have to make in my lifetime uh, as MP. Uh, and I'll remember the decision for the rest of my life because we are deciding the future of our country. And it's, the biggest, it's one of the biggest decisions over the last uh, 50 years. And of course, there are a lot of different views about what should be uh, what should be done. I have big problems with the deal that the Prime Minister proposed because we're having to pay 39 billion if we do that deal when we could be spending, potentially spending at least some of that money at home on schools, on hospitals, on cutting taxes for the lower paid, on helping our public uh, services. And I made, I had a meeting with the Prime Minister this week, I told her that, I get on with her, I respect her, I know she's doing her duty, and I have big problems with the deal. And so I'm likely not to vote for it next week un unless there are some significant changes uh, that the government announce. And what about the idea of an aspect of no deal? Surely that haunts our town, doesn't it? Well, no one knows. Uh, this is the problem. Um, no one knows what would happen under a no deal uh, uh, scenario. It depends how prepared the country is. It depends, for example, let's say, for example, we had a transition uh, year uh, for a year. So we'd be out of the EU, but you'd have a transition and the country properly prepared for a uh, no deal, then it might be possible. Maybe we're already members of a thing called the European Economic Area. Right? We joined that in the 1990s, which um, it may be that we would move to that level of status with the European Union and stay in that until we negotiated another deal or prepared the country for a no deal. So there are a lot of different combinations out there. Um, but what could happen? The problem is, and I'm going to be completely straight with you, uh, with your hollow uh, readers, is I genuinely don't know what is going to happen next week. I don't know uh, what will happen if Prime Minister's deal fails. Um, but uh, I the, the issue for me is, do you vote on the, what you think are the merits of the deal? And I think there are severe problems. It costs 39 billion if we do it. It means we stuck in the um, a, a spaghetti of bureaucracy in the European Union for years on end without having any vote, any say. Um, and we have uh, different customs arranged for different parts of the United Kingdom, particularly uh, Northern Ireland. So uh, to me it's a big problem, but do you vote for it on the merits of the deal, worried about what will happen? In other words, do you hold on to nurse for fear of something worse? And that is the different issue that I'm wrestling with uh, every day. And I'll, I'll, you know, but I'm pretty likely, as it stands, unless there are significant changes to vote against what the uh, prime minister proposed, because I promised the constituents of Marlow, and this is very important to me. I promised the constituents of Marlow the day after the referendum. You know this because I made a statement to your Harlow on the uh, on the uh, 2016 July, the day after the referendum. You will have that statement. I promised I would do everything possible to make sure that Brexit means Brexit, to respect the views of the 68% who voted to leave in Harlow and of the country. And I voted for Article 50. I then subsequently did everything I could to make uh, leaving the European Union possible. It's hard for me to vote for a deal which potentially keeps us in, uh, in a kind of entanglement of the EU and costs £39 billion. Uh, so that's why I'm wrestling about next week.